muscles. They're pretty incredible, right? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today on the ATIT's version 7 human anatomy and physiology portion of the exam, more specifically the muscular system. Let's get started. The good thing to know is that the ATITs is not going to delve into the names of various muscles, but it is going to focus more on muscle tissue and the mechanism of muscle contraction, particularly when it comes to that actin myosin cycle. First up, let's discuss muscle tissue. So muscle tissue consists of muscle fibers, which are essential when it comes to muscle cells. These fibers have specialized structures that enhance their functionality. We're going to cover three types of muscle tissue, cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and skeletal muscle. So starting with cardiac muscle tissue, it's as the name implies, it's primarily found in our heart. These fibers are going to have this branched-like appearance, and they're going to be striped or striated as well. Cardiac muscle is going to have this striated appearance due to its presence of sacromeres, which are the basic structural and functional unit when it comes to muscle fibers. We're gonna be discussing this concept a little bit more into detail in just a moment. Each fiber is going to contain a single nucleus. And at the end of these fibers, you're going to see these intercalculated discs, which are there to provide an organized wave-like pattern. This organized arrangement allows for efficient, coordinated contractions, which are essential for pumping blood throughout our body. What's important to know is that control of this muscle tissue is involuntary, meaning that it operates without our conscious control. Next up, we have smooth muscle tissue, which is characterized as a non-striated uniform appearance, hence the name smooth. Unlike striated muscle, it lacks visible stripes or bands. Each muscle fiber has this kind of spindle shape featuring a more broader center as it tapers off down towards the ends, and it also contains a single nucleus. Smooth muscle is found throughout the body, including our digestive system, in the walls of our arteries and our veins, in the bladder, as well as in our eyes, where it adjusts the size of our iris. Like cardiac muscle, smooth muscle also operates involuntarily, meaning that it functions not under conscious control. It allows it to handle essential bodily functions automatically. And lastly, we have skeletal muscle tissue, which is what typically comes to mind whenever you think of your bicep or your tricep. This type of muscle attaches to both our bones and our skin. And this one is actually under voluntary control, meaning that we can consciously operate it. For instance, anytime I think about wanting to pick something up, I'm able to consciously control picking that item up. This is what we mean by that voluntary control. If we were to look closely at these kinds of muscles, you're gonna find that skeletal muscle tissue fibers are gonna be striated, displaying that same striation appearance like we saw with our cardiac muscles. The fibers themselves are going to be long and cylinder, and each one of these fibers is going to have multiple nuclei. This is very different from what we talked about when it came to cardiac and smooth muscle. This kind of unique structure is going to be crucial for their function when it comes to rapid and forceful contraction over an extended period of time. All muscle tissues share several key characteristics worth noting. They possess extensibility, meaning that they can stretch or extend, and then they have elasticity, meaning that they can return back to their original form after they were stretched. Muscle tissue can also exhibit excitability, which refers to the cell's ability to respond to stimuli. In muscle tissues, this trait allows their membranes to undergo electrical changes and transmit action potentials. Additionally, muscle tissues are capable of contracting, a property known as contractility. The mechanism of contraction varies among the three different kinds of muscle tissues. If we delve into cellular structures of skeletal muscle, we can explore how it accomplishes its primary function, contraction. It is arguably the most fascinating aspect of this discussion. Let's take, for example, our bicep muscle. This muscle is composed of numerous muscle fibers, which are essentially muscle cells. Within each muscle fiber, you're going to find multiple myofibrils, which are elongated cylinders. These myofibrils are segmented into repeating units known as sacromeres. The specific arrangement of these sacromeres gives skeletal muscles its distinctive striated appearance. Within each sacromere, you're going to find the protein actin, which forms what is known as our thin filaments. There's an additional protein known as myosin, which constitutes our 
thick filaments. To help you remember which one is which, think of the word thin being nearly contained in the word actin. It's just ultimately missing that H, but it closely aids in helping us remember the differences between our thin and our thick filaments. Both actin and myosin are vital when it comes to muscle contraction as they both play a key role in that mechanic. So let's talk about the sliding filament model when it comes to muscle contraction. I'm going to provide a simplified explanation of this concept, but know that it could go way further into detail. So let's start with the basic components, which we already know about our sacromere. We have our actin, which is our thin filaments, which is going to be here in our brown color. And we have myosin, which is our thick filaments, which are gonna be here in our blue color. The sacromere is bound at each end by Z lines like we see here in yellow where thin filaments are ultimately going to attach, which is our actin. On the other hand, our thick filaments, which is our myosin, is going to attach to the center line known as our M line through accessory proteins. A crucial aspect when it comes to muscle contraction is the shortening of our sacromere. However, it's really important to note that the thick and thin filaments do not actively shorten themselves. Instead, what's actually going to happen is they're going to slide past each other, facilitating this process. During this contraction, our thin filaments are going to be pulled towards the center of our sacromere by our thick filaments, causing that Z line to ultimately move closer together and the filaments are going to overlap each other more extensively. So it's really critical to know when you're taking your ATITs is that the thick and thin filaments do not shorten, they just ultimately slide. If we were to further zoom into this process, this is what it's going to look like on a molecular level. On the thin filament, we have our actin, which we see here in brown. And on our thick filament, we have our myosin, which we see here in blue. Our myosin are equipped with these myosin heads. Although there are hundreds of these heads, we're gonna focus on just one to provide us with more clarity. This myosin head that we have right here is going to bind to ATP. It's going to become hydrolyzed and turn into ADP and a phosphate group both of which remain on that myosin head. This process is going to enable those myosin heads to bind to that actin, forming what we know as a cross bridge. Subsequently, that myosin head is going to release that ADP in that phosphate group, and it's going to undergo this kind of bending motion known as a power stroke, as it drags that thin filament towards the center of the sacromere. A new ATP is then going to bind again to that myosin head, and that's going to allow that head to detach from the actin. This necessity for ATP is also why muscles become rigid after death in a state known as rigor mortis. Without this ATP, the myosin heads don't know whether they can detach from the actin. During muscle contraction, imagine hundreds of these cross bridge formations continuously forming and breaking as each myosin head performs its power strokes. This action with some of the heads always attached to the actin prevents those thin filaments from slipping back into their original positions, ensuring that we have an effective muscle contraction. I hope that this video is helpful in understanding everything you're gonna to need to know when it comes to muscle tissues. As always, if you have any questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com where there's a ton of additional resources in order to help you ace those ATIT's exams. And as always, I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Bye!